In order to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, there's a couple ways you can do it. Today, we're going to use a system called coordinate geometry to do it, which is very algebraic. And it really involves two formulas. There's a third that we sometimes use, but the midpoint formula, but these are our primary ones. You might remember this one. It's called the distance formula. And what it says is that if I've got two points, let's say I've got a point here and a point here, each point has an X and a Y value. Here's the X, here's the Y. And this one's also got an X and a Y value. And the problem is if we've got two X's and two Y's, how do you tell which part is which? So what we'll often do is we'll go in and on the first coordinate, this is point one, we'll put a little subscript of a one. So it's X sub one and the same subscript on the Y. So it's Y sub one. And then we'll say, okay, and if this is our second point, I'll call this X sub two and Y sub two. And what the distance formula says is I'm gonna take the difference between the X's. So three minus five, and I'll square that. And then I'll add on the difference between the Y's, seven minus a negative one. When you minus a negative, it looks like a positive. And then I'll just simplify those parts. Negative two, because this negative is inside there, it becomes a positive four. Eight times eight is 64. Combine those two and you get square root of 68. So let's do that process, applying the distance formula together for this one. I'm going to say that D is equal to square root of, and I'm going to have two little sets of parentheses in here that are both squared. Okay, everybody get to that space, please. And now, I'm sorry. Oh, um, I just got here. Can you put the uh, link for this in the chat so I can print it out? Sure. Um, you know, it's also in uh, Canvas, right, Eden, too? Oh, I do. Um, Mr. Erlen, I have a question. Yeah. How are we supposed to copy down the formula if we're doing it online? Um, there is an image. Let's see what we got here. There is a character that you can use. You could just do like the maybe slash, mm -hmm. do parentheses, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever. Do the best you can. I understand that it's not perfect when we do it online. But show me that you're thinking about it and engaged. That's what I really want to see. <clears throat> okay. Um, so within this first one, I'm going to be subtracting the X's. So I'll take the first X, 5, minus the other one, minus 1. And then for the other one, I'm gonna take away the Y's. So seven minus three. And then I'm just gonna clean this up. So I'll rewrite it. Five minus one is four squared. Seven minus three is also four squared. That means that is 16 plus 16, which means that it's the square root of 32. At a later point, we'll talk about how to simplify this, but this particular time, it's asking you to round to two decimal places. So I'm just going to pull out my calculator, and I'm going to say the square root of 32, and it gives me an answer. Now, that answer is not precise, even though it's got a whole bunch of decimals to it, 5.6568. 5.4249, it's actually probably not ending at nine. It might end at like eight, and then the next number is a six, rounding it up. It goes on forever. So this isn't a precise number. So instead of writing a little equal sign there, I really should make it a squiggly equal sign, showing that it's kind of close to that value, but not exactly that value. And because it said round to the nearest two decimal points, I'm going to say that the answer should be 5.6. Let's see, this five is where I want to split it. And the number after that is more than halfway. So I'm going to round this up 5.66. Would you please try to do the same process here for number two?
And when you finish, take a look at my screen and see if you got the same answer, please. And if you'd now please give me a response in the chat. How do you feel about applying the distance formula to find the distance between two points? Five, it's easy, I can do this. Three, it kind of makes sense to me, but I need to have the formula in front of me and a calculator and, you know, take some focus. One, I'm struggling with this, this is not easy. I have a question. Yeah. So after, I'm like, I'm writing down the notes for the first equation, but um, after like 16 plus 16, you still have to put like a square root on that, right? Like on 32? Yes. Oh, so, so. Were you tempted to say. To like the square, so do you have to square root 32? Like you find could, the square root? Yeah. Yeah, that's why it ends up around five. Did you end up with eight because you did the square root of 16 plus the other square root of 16? No, I was just, no, I didn't square root 32 yet, but I just didn't know we had to square root after that. Yeah. It's funny, that little symbol means so much, doesn't it? It totally changes the value. Yeah. Okay, any questions on doing the distance formula? I know this is, you know, quote unquote review. I'm sure you've forgotten a lot about it. It's been a while since you've done these. But this particular element is really algebra. Then we'll do the slope, which is also algebra. And then I'll show you how we're going to apply this in geometry. So you might remember slope as like rise over run. That's the way we often remember it. And what we're doing to calculate this is the same idea. If we look at how far apart our y values are, that's the rise. That's how much it's gone up by. Whereas when we look at the distance between the x's, that's the run. That's how much it moves over laterally. So the slope formula is m equals, and then I have to take the difference between the y's. So the second part is y, so I'll go 6 minus 2, and then divide that by the difference between the x's, so 5 minus negative 4. 6 minus 2 is 4, and when I do minus a negative, that's really the same thing as adding. So I'm going to make those plus, and it becomes 4 over 9. And that's a reduced fraction. So that's my final answer. I'm just going to leave it like that. Would you please do number two yourselves? Same way. When you're done, check your answer. See if you got a four also. If you left it as eight over two, it's okay. It's better to reduce it, but it's not the wrong value. And please give me a response in the chat. How's the slope for you? Five, this part's easy. I remember this one. Three, the formula helps me and I can just plug it in and do it. This one's definitely easier. One, I never learned this. How come I got to know this? Okay. 
Thank How you. do you know when to um, add it, like make it positive to five? I'm it's, just confused on that. Yeah. Anytime we've got A minus a negative B, where you've got two of these negatives in a row, you can change that to A plus a positive B. But it has to be two negatives in a row. If you have A minus a positive B, it stays just A minus B. And if you have A plus a negative B, you can treat that as A minus B. It's only when you've got two of the same signs, they're both negatives, that you can change it to positive. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I had a fellow teacher who used to talk about this stuff by using this idea of a cold cube, like an ice cube. And if you have a temperature and you take out some ice cubes, overall the temperature goes up. It gets more positive because you're removing cold. Sometimes that helps people understand. Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. They're going to give us four points all the corners of it. And we're going to use one of these three rules to prove that it is a parallelogram or not. The first one, I'm going to use this middle one here, is the definition. The way we know that something is a parallelogram is when its opposite sides are parallel, which means what we'd expect to see here is that this side AB is the same steepness parallel to the side known as DC. But that's only half the puzzle. You can't just do one set of parallel sides. In order to make it a parallelogram, you got to have both sets be parallel. So we'd also need to know that AD is parallel to BC. And if we know both of those things, then we can say that this is a parallelogram. Now, the problem is, how do we establish just from these coordinates that these two lines have the same direction, the same steepness? Well, that means they're going to have the same slope. So when you're trying to prove the lines are parallel, we're going to use the slope formula, which is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We've got two more ways we can do this. One way is if you see a quadrilateral four-sided figure where this side and this side are the same length and this side and this side are the same length, that tells you that these sides together make a parallelogram. So what I need to establish is that the length of AB is the same size as the length of DC and that the length of AD is the same size as BC. And what tool will I use to establish that these lengths are the same when I'm given just points? Distance formula? That's it. distance formula does that for us, which is d is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared.
Okay, and then the last one. If we know that one pair of opposite sides is both of them. In other words, this pair is both parallel and the same size. That's going to be enough to show that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So I'd need a B to be parallel to DC and I'd need a B to be equal to DC. So what tools will I use to do that? Well, I'm going to have to use the slope. Would you have to use both of them? Exactly. You got to use the slope for the parallel part and the distance formula for the other part. Ends up being about the same amount of work because you got to use the distance formula twice here. You got to use the slope formula twice here. And here you got to use one formula for here and a second formula. So it's still two formulas. But I think slope is definitely easier. Okay, so let's try it. Set number one, it gives us the coordinates and it tells us to use the distance formula to determine if this is a parallelogram. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first two points a and B, and I'm going to find AB using my distance formula. So that says take the difference between the X's, 1 minus negative 7, and the difference between the Y's, 4 minus 2. So 1 minus negative 7, that's two of those negatives, that's going to mean plus. So that's 8 squared, and then 4 minus 2 is 2 squared. Stop dragging this thing out so long, I don't need it to be that long. What that's going to give me then is 8 squared is 64. plus four, which means it equals to 68, square root of 68. Now, do I have to simplify that? Do I have to use a um, calculator and estimate? No, I don't. I'm instead just going to leave it like that so that when I compare it to this other one, I can just look and see if they look the same. So I picked those two blue ones there. And I'm going to match with these two blue ones. So CD is equal to 1 minus 9 squared plus negative 6 minus negative 8 squared. So that's negative 8 squared and negative 6 minus negative 8. Those go positive. So that's negative 6 plus a positive 8, so it's net positive 2. And that's going to give me 64 plus 4. Oh, good, it works out. It comes out the same. Since these two values are the same, I can say that AB equals CD. That's half of what I wanted. That gives me one set of sides are the same size. So now, what side length should I look for? I just did A, B, and C, D. So now I got to go with A, D. And I'll take the difference of the X's. 
Wait, so what this problem we have to do, like we have to do the distance formula four times to answer this problem? Yep. Oh, okay. Do you mind going a little slower, please? Not at all. Okay, thank you. So do you have the formula written down? So what it says to do is you take the difference of the x's. So in other words, I'm going to take 1x, 1, minus the other x, negative 7. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the y's. I know that I'm going to take the difference between two values. This is the first y value, negative 6. And this is the second y value, 4. So negative 6 minus 4. And then I'm just going to draw it again and clean it up. What happens when you do 1 minus a negative 7? It's that double minus thing that we talked about with Tomas. So that means 8 squared. Plus, how do you do negative 6 minus 4? And if this is called integer operations, this process of adding and subtracting negatives, and it's something that we spend a lot of time on in pre-algebra because it comes back like this, but it's been a long time since you guys have done this. So if this is something that was tough for you, and when you look at this, you're like, I, I don't know how to do this, just get a calculator and do negative six minus four. Make sure you're using the little negative sign for the negative six not the subtraction sign. So you go like negative 6 minus 4. And it tells us the total is negative 10. And then we're going to keep cleaning this up. 8 squared is 64 plus negative 10 squared is 100. 64 and 100 makes 164. And it's still stuck in that square root sign. And what's the other side we want to do? So we did these two, A and B, and we did C and D, because that's the other pair. Now we just did A and D, so what's the last one we want to do? Is it B, C? Good. And I know that I'm going to start off with these two parentheses squared and added together. Let me get some contributions here. What goes in this spot? Is it an X or a Y value? Nine. No. Yeah. yeah. No, right. nine. Yes. It's the X value of the second point. We're saying B, C. So it's the X value. It's nine. And we're going to subtract from that what number? One. Good, because it's the x value of the first one. And then what goes over here? Negative 8 and 2. Excellent. Negative 8 is the y value from the second point. And from that, we're going to subtract the y value from the first point which is two. And I think at least that's the hardest part is like finding which point goes where and you really have to pay attention to this point. But now I just kind of ignore all this mess 
and just look at each little part. You do the parentheses first. Nine minus one is eight, and it's still being squared. Negative eight minus two. Maybe that's one of the ones that throws you. So you got negative eight minus two, negative 10 again. And because the overall number inside here is a negative that's being squared, I have to keep my parentheses around it because I'm squaring negative 10, not just the opposite 10, the opposite of 10 squared. The difference is this should come out to be a positive number, not a negative number. So this comes out to be 64 plus 100, which gives me the same square root of 164. When I look at those two, they're the same. So what's the fact that I can take out of that? 80 equals BC. Really good. These two are the same size. So this left part gave us this fact. This right part gave us this fact. And what does that let us say overall? That it is congruent and parallel. Oh no, that it is parallel. Most, we got two sets of sides that are equal. That's what we asked for up here. If we can find two sets of opposite sides that are equal. Oh, then they're congruent? Oh, it's a parallelogram. Right? And we're trying to say that shape is a parallelogram. <laughs> I know it's a long process. And so it's easy to get lost and forget where was I, what was I trying to do here? What we're trying to get is that it is a parallelogram and we just verified that. How'd you feel about that? Five, I can do that. I know that formula cold. Three, it makes sense to me. It's gonna take some focus, right? I gotta keep my eye on the ball here because it's got a lot of details, but I think I can do it. One, that's too much for me. There's too many numbers and pluses and minuses and squares. It just feels overwhelming. Okay. Pretty good square, so of course, okay. Um, I wanna move on to do the slope and then we'll come back and do another one like this. So move to page two, please. And this time it's saying, use the slope formula to determine if the figure, figure is a parallelogram. And that's gonna be easier for us. So we're gonna take two points next to each other and we're gonna find the slope of them. And you might remember the formula for slope. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So the way I like to do the notation for this is I say M and I leave a little bit of space before I write the equal sign. And then in that space, I'm gonna write what points I'm finding the slope for. In this case, between W and X. So I make it a little subscript down below that says M, the slope, of the points W, X will be what? And then I'm going to plug it in with this structure. So I take the second Y value minus the first Y value. Okay, here's my second point. There's the second Y value and I'm subtracting the first y value. 
I'm just going to leave that alone for a second. I'm not going to let the negatives mess me up. And then I'll do the x's on the bottom. So I'll take the second x value minus the first x value. Make sure everyone gets that, and then we'll go into solving it. And like Tomas was talking about, we have the opportunity to look at two of these in a row. When you've got minus and negative, we can just call that a plus. And when we've got minus a negative, we can call that a plus. So really what we're looking at here is negative 6 plus 4 over 1 plus 7. And maybe that's still tough for me. Okay, so pull out the calculator. Negative 6 plus 4 negative two. And I could have just done that from the start, negative six minus a negative four. It'll still give me the same answer of negative two. And one plus seven is eight. And then I'd like to reduce this. I could divide both parts by two and I get negative one fourth. That's my slope for one of those. questions on that? I have a question. Yeah. Um, so for like using, so for this equation, do you still have to do it four times like the distance formula? You do, because we got to get the slope of all four sides and see if we have two pairs that match. And is, would it be like the same pair, like, like how it was like the first half and the second half and then like the two at the end and the two in the middle? Perfect, that's exactly right. So the next one we'll do is these two, M, Y, and Z. And do you see why it's important that we keep track of which one we're finding the slope for? Because we gotta be able to compare them, right? So this one says negative Y, I mean, excuse me, Y2, negative 12 minus negative 13 over one minus five. See my double plus is gonna change there. So I've got a negative 12 plus a positive 13. That's gonna give me a one. One minus five is negative four. So this just changes to negative one fourth. That's my slope. And what does that tell us? Wait, could you redo that part again? I, I don't, yeah, I'm just a little confused. Okay, so you see the two points I'm dealing with are Y, that's my first point, and Z, that's my second point. And the formula says I'm gonna take the Y value of my second point minus the Y value of my first point. So these are the y values here. They're the second ones. So I'm going to take negative 12 minus negative 13. And if this little trick of changing them into pluses is confusing for you, again, I really want you to get the concept down. I don't want you to be lost in the arithmetic. So if you need to use a calculator to do that original one and just get one, that's fine. That's what we did. But don't let the arithmetic. I thought you made them positive. So wouldn't. I made this one positive. But when I make the negative 13 positive, I have to also change the subtraction property into addition. Okay. So, so that doesn't have an effect. Okay. That doesn't have an effect on the negative number. Okay. That's what I thought. On the 12, exactly. Right. The negative 12 is still a negative 12. Okay. That makes sense then. All right. Thank you. Yep. So what do I get out of this, right? What was the point of comparing these two slopes? Are they the same slope? Yes. 
Sure they are. Negative one fourth, negative one fourth. If two lines, WX and YZ, have the same slope, what can we say about those two lines? That they are parallel. Yes, that's it. Good. We'll say that WX is parallel to YZ. Now I'm going to try it over here with, we'll use some reds. So which are the other two I got to do? I'm going to do W and Z. So I'm going to find the slope of W and Z, which means I'm going to go with negative 12. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. Sorry, I probably should have asked this earlier before, um, for the green one, right? For yep. Y and Z. Yep. Why did you why why did you like flip the the fraction one over negative four? Instead of making it negative four over one. Instead of just making it negative one over four. Oh. Oh, why did I change it from here to here? Yeah. Just change so it matches here. But does that matter though? Like, would that change anything? Good question. Um, if I were to do positive one divided by negative four on a calculator, I get negative 0.25. If I do negative one divided by positive four, I'd also get negative 0.25. If I were to put a negative out in front of one over four, I would also get negative 0.25. Those are all the same. Oh, so, oh, so, so if this was on a test and we had to do that and I had like, if I had one negative one over four and one over negative four, would that still be like the same thing? I would be okay with that as long as you're okay recognizing that they're the same so that you can call them parallel. Yeah. Right? You in your head would be, saying, ah, this is the same thing as that, so I can make this claim. If you couldn't see that because you didn't understand that this is the same, then that would be an issue, right? Mm hmm Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, so we're going from W to Z. So we're going from negative 12 minus negative 4 over 1 minus negative 7. And maybe we just don't even worry about all this little trickery and fancy stuff I've got. We go negative 12 minus a negative 4, so that becomes a negative 8. And then we have one minus a negative seven, and that becomes eight. What would this simplify to? Negative one. Yeah, it's just a slope of negative one. So what's the last one we got to do here? Just did those ends. So we're doing those middles. Okay, what's my first number? Negative 13. Good. Minus. Six. Good, but it's a negative six, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So it will be plus six. Yeah, good. It will turn into a plus six, basically. Okay, and then I'm going to take my x value, five minus one. So like you said, this is really negative 13 plus 6, which gives me negative 7. And this is 5 minus 1, which gives me 4. Huh. OK, so what can I get out of that?
That is not a parallelogram. Good. That's the final step. W, X, Y, Z is not a parallelogram. And what led you to that belief? What did you interpret out of this that led you to that? Um, because if it was a parallelogram, all the sides would have been like equal congruent. And since the second part, uh, W, Z and X, Y, since they're not the same, they don't have the same answer, um, then it means that they're not parallel or they're not. Yes, congruent. that's the word I was looking for. We know that W, Z is not parallel to X, Y. That's what we got out of that. Since those slopes are not the same, it's not parallel. And unless both pairs are parallel, it's not a parallelogram. So in this case, it's not a parallelogram. Wait, was that just like a check? Was that a what? Yeah, well, this whole problem is asking you, figure out if the shape is a parallelogram, right? Determine if the figure is a parallelogram. And this is the way we do it. We look at the slope of two opposite sides. And when the slopes are the same, we say, okay, those sides are parallel. And then we look at the slope of the other two opposite sides. We said, they're not parallel. Ah, uh, okay. So if one pair of sides is parallel and the other is not, what we're looking at is a shape like this. These sides are parallel. These sides are not. That shape is not called a parallelogram. That's called a trapezoid. But the question was, is it a parallelogram? And we have to say, no, it's not. And you know that with certainty. You're not just guessing. You're not like plotting the points and saying, it kind of looks like a parallel. You're doing the math to validate for sure, because these two sides are not parallel. So they can never, like, if they're not the same, they're always not going to be a parallelogram? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so the third set, you remember our third example here, has to do with you do one slope and one distance from the same pair of sides. We're going to see if this side and this side are both parallel and congruent. So we get one of each this time. Who would like to pick the side we do? Pick the two points that make up the side we're gonna look into this for. How about Eden? Why don't you pick two letters next to each other? J, K, K, L, L, M, or J, M? Um, let's do J, K. Sounds great. So we're going to first find the distance, right? It says use the distance formula. So I want to find JK. That's this big long one. And that's the setup, right? It's parentheses subtracted and squared plus another parentheses subtracting and squared. And then I just got to put the right values in. So I'm going to- um, I probably should have asked it way earlier. I just didn't really think about it. Um, so when you're putting a uh, four um, num in, does it matter? So you put the X's in first slots and then the Y's in the second slots matter interchangeable? Like, could I put the Y like, um, say you were doing um, the first parenthesis thing would be negative and negative five. Um, would it matter if the second parenthesis set was that or like if parenthesis set was, does that make sense? It does. It's a great question. And you're thinking at a higher level to ask that question. So I like that you asked that. For this one, because you end up squaring it, <clears throat> it doesn't matter which order you put them in, one and two. And because this is addition, it doesn't matter whether you do them like this or like this. 
But right. when we do this slope, they're not being squared. So if you were to put, for instance, the Y1 and then the Y2, it's going to change the sign of this. Instead of it being positive, it'll be negative. And if you did that for the bottom one as well, that would offset each other. It'd be okay. But if you only flipped the top and left the bottom the same, you'd end up with a wrong slope. You'd end up with positive 7 fourths instead of negative 7 fourths. And okay. if you flipped the X's and the Y's, like up and down, you'd end up with 4 sevenths instead of 7 fourths, which is a different number. So for the slope, it has a big impact of keeping them the same. For this one, it really doesn't. Okay, so JK, we're going X is here first. So I'm gonna put in my negative five here and I'm matching that with my negative nine. And then for the Y's, I'm gonna do one and negative two. And then I'm going to say, okay, so negative five minus a negative nine. Well, that's really like plus nine. So I've got a positive nine and a negative five. That's going to be a net of a positive four squared. One minus a negative two. That's the same as one plus two. So that's three squared. Which means I end up with 16 plus nine, which is square root of 25, which is just five. Wait, so did you, when you were picking out those numbers and placing them in, did you choose them in a certain order? Or like when you guys were, when you and Ian were talking about that, did you guys like make that so you had to like, I'm just confused if you use the slope formula again on this one. We're gonna do that next. I'm gonna do that over here because- So you did you grab just the negative five and the negative nine because they're both negatives or because you were using it from the formula? Because I'm using it from the formula. Okay. Distance, I was to confirm that. Okay. distance formula says find the difference of the X's first. And so I chose the two values that were in the beginning of their parentheses. This one's Okay. Fine. Yeah. So that's that's what I just wanted to make sure. I, th I thought you were doing it at random because you said it didn't matter. Um, no, I, I did it to match the formula to try to not confuse you guys. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So now that we've checked JK, which one should I check now? It's kind of like we've got this shape and we just checked JK. LM. Yes. And so we're going to want to find the distance for LM. So again, I'll do X minus X, negative three minus one squared plus negative seven minus a negative four. Negative three minus one is a negative four squared. Negative seven plus four is a negative three squared. That's equal to 16 plus nine, which gets me that same square root of 25, which is five. Is that what we were hoping for? Yes. It is. What can we conclude from that? That they're parallel or the same? Oh, yeah, we have to be careful about the word, right? Because this was the distance formula. And what that means is that the length from J to K is the same as the length from L to M. It doesn't speak about its angle. It's not about parallel. What did we get here? We got that J, K, and L, M are what? Equal. Equal, good. 
or congruent. Not parallel, that's a different issue. So now let's go to the other side over here and let's use the slopes. We still want MK, uh, uh, JK. So we'll say the slope of JK and we'll compare that with the slope of LM. And if we can show those are the same, then that's the second part we need to say these are parallelograms. Okay, slope formula. That's the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. So I'm gonna use the colors again. So I'm gonna go with y. These are both minus. y minus y. Okay, what goes here? Negative nine and negative four. Most. This tells us what the two points are, right? J and K. And on the bottom, we're looking for what? The x's or the y's? Negative five, negative nine. Good. Negative five first, and then negative nine. This is the one where it does matter that we do them in the right order. You see how the green and the purple are together? I expect the green and the purple to be in the same place. And the red and the orange are together. I expect the orange and the red to be in the same place. And again, this is just a, the integer operations here. So use a calculator if you want, or change that to positive and you get three. And this makes this positive. So a negative five plus four is a negative one, which means overall it's a negative three. No, it doesn't. I totally did that wrong, didn't I? Negative five plus nine is positive four. And I get that, so it's going to come out to be three fourths. Ready for the last part? goes here. Going from L to M. So M is the second point. I want to start with a Y. So negative seven minus negative four, and then I want to come from the same one, negative three, minus one. So this turns positive, negative seven plus four is a negative three, negative three minus one is a negative four, but a negative on top and a negative on the bottom means they're both the same as positive. So what do we get out of this? They're congruent? Most. Parallel? Yeah, we were comparing slopes. So if they have the same slope, we can say that JK is parallel to LM. And what this theorem is asking us to demonstrate is that if one pair of sides, JK and LM, is both equal and parallel, then we get to say 
three little dots means therefore J K L M is a P gram. This means therefore. Okay, there's a lot of little minutia in these types of problems, right? So if you followed along carefully and have notes showing how to do this, you've had an experience at it. A little more practice would be helpful, but here's what I'm gonna say. If you're successful at turning these notes into Canvas, I'm gonna give you a five out of five for today's problems today's classwork just for turning in what we did. That does not mean you can turn in my copy, right? If you followed along and did it yourself or you write it yourself out, I'll give you the five out of five. If you want to take this further and prepare yourself well for what's coming with advanced algebra or intermediate algebra, and you want to do the second from each of these sets, notice how I did the first one and left the second one blank. I did the first one, left the second one blank. I did the first one and left the second one blank. If you want to go back and do those three as additional practice, I'll give you extra credit. I'll give you seven points out of five for the assignment. That's Mr. your Ryan? Yeah. I have a question. Yep. Um, so, cause since it was online, I, I did take some photos of the notes and copy and paste it. Do you want me to rewrite it out or should I submit it how it is? Um, I do want you to do the work yourself for the for the credit. Okay, no problem. I just wanted to check if I should rewrite it. Yeah. And one of you asked, how do you turn in notes if you printed them and did them by hand? So some of you might be changing over from using the Google system to doing printing. And what I find, there might be an easier way to do it, but what I find is um, take pictures from your phone and then you could just send them up. I personally like using the notes icon I'm using an iPhone and there's, I don't know if you can see it, the little, the little yellow top that says notes. If I hold that down, it brings up a menu, one of which says scan document. And it'll let me create like a two or three page PDF that I can load up as a single file. So that's what I recommend. Any more questions on today's notes? Okay, again, my hope is that most of you are now done with your geometry for the day, which means for the weekend, because you followed along in class and have these notes completed. Submit those and you're done. I'm doing this, giving you kind of very little to do in hopes that all of you will be totally caught up for next week. Next week, you have a Monday off, then you have a short week. So you got a three day weekend and I'd love to see everybody caught up. What things are outstanding? Probably the only one that most of you have to worry about is the Moodle quiz. If you haven't done your Moodle quiz, then you're falling behind. And you remember last fall when we had people who hadn't done a number of the tests. I don't wanna go down that path this time. I want you to keep up with tests and quizzes as we go. I'm giving you a three-day weekend to do this quiz. So please do it. Let me see where we stand. I see that. I see that Tomas has taken a stab at it, needs to work a little more on it. Oliver's taken a stab at it, needs to work a little more on it. Sasha's good. Miracle's good. 
Nancy's taking a stab and needs another shot at it. Marcus is taking a stab at it. He's got a good score. Daniela's taking a stab, needs another shot at it. Uh, Lucia's done it, done a great job. Mark is taking a stab and needs another shot at it. Uh, Manny's taking a stab at it, needs another shot at it. If I didn't mention your name, you haven't tried yet. I want you to get in there and try it at least. Get a good shot at it. And then talk to anyone you want to figure out what you did wrong and repair it. Would you like me to model one of the versions? You want me to go through someone's trial quiz? Anyone want to volunteer? No? Okay. Then you guys can, um, it's about seven minutes till class is out, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to let you go, finish this up and load it and do the quiz, please. Have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, everyone.